Hey guys, it's Adam from Mr. Pixel and welcome back. Now today I want to tap on a personal topic and a somewhat complicated one. And the reason it's complicated is because it's something that attacks us personally and we as individuals have our own ways of dealing about it, our own ways of allowing it to impact us or not impact us. And furthermore, it prompts us to react sometimes in a way that exposes our vulnerability. And that's the subject of rejection. And here's a statistic that I am pulling out from the back of my head with absolutely no scientific backing whatsoever. But my educated guess is that the majority of us, in fact, if not almost all of us, will have to deal with rejection with regards to our art if our goal is to work professionally at least once or twice in our lives. And for the majority of those people, it's going to be more often than not, particularly earlier on in your career when your skills aren't quite there yet, when you don't have the presentation skills, your artwork or technical, technical skills might not be up to par just yet, or a plethora of other possibilities. So what I want to talk about today is what rejection is and how to work with it, how to navigate around it, and furthermore, how to use it to your advantage. And the first question is, why do we get rejected? What are the reasons why we might get rejected? Well, most of the time, the reasons for being rejected are very objective ones. Our artwork just isn't technically there yet. We're not quite strong enough artistically. And that's a bit, this is a bit of a baffling one for us artists because how do we know when our artwork is good enough, right? But we'll get back to that in a sec. Another reason why, which I've actually spoken about in the past, and I would argue this is probably the more common reason why our portfolio might be rejected for a certain job is not because of the skill or the skill level. It's because of the style that we have. And I had some personal insight into this years ago when I applied for a job at Ubisoft, which is a local studio. Ubisoft originates in Montreal, where I'm from. And it just so happened that one of the art, one of the HR reps, the human resources representatives that worked there was an old friend of mine childhood friend. I used to go to his horse riding, his father's horse riding camp when I was a kid and he rejected me. I sent him my portfolio and I thought to myself, I've definitely got a foot in the door here. This is awesome. And I was a more experienced artist. I was a little bit more senior at the time. So I made the application and a couple of days later, he wrote me back and said, I'm sorry, we decided to go with somebody else. Now, normally I know not to do this from experience, but I thought, Hey, I do know this guy personally, so maybe I can take advantage of this opportunity. And I asked him why my portfolio got rejected. And the answer that I got was very eye-opening and very enlightening. It really gave me a perspective into myself and to be completely honest, played a very important role in the career direction that I ended up taking shortly thereafter. He said to me, and he even did me the courtesy of sending me the link, the LinkedIn profile of this other artist who had gotten the job. And he said, this is the person that, um, that we gave the job to. And he said, as you can see, he's a younger, he's a more junior artist who doesn't have your technical skill just yet. And he wasn't saying that just to be kind or, you know, or to, to protect my ego. I could see that this artist was definitely newer. He was younger, very good, mind you. But he said what he does have is the style. His style matches the style of the project that we're looking for. And if you know anything about, about Ubisoft or Ubisoft type company structures, they generally, they, they function almost as little smaller companies within the umbrella of Ubisoft. So there's a lot of private projects going on with smaller teams all within this company. And in this particular project, they were looking for somebody who had a lot more of a sci-fi type of style, which if you've seen my work at all, you'll notice, you'll notice that there's zero of that in my portfolio. 
And it made me realize something. It made perfect sense from a director's perspective and from an applicant, an artist applicant's perspective, it makes sense that the style would be more important because you're taking less of a chance with somebody who has the style. You can team them up with a senior artist and that senior artist can bring them up to speed very quickly. Whereas when you don't have the style, that requires an entire rebranding, a fresh restart on that artist's particular skill. And this is particularly challenging for artists who have been doing a certain style and have really mastered a certain style over many years. It's a much bigger endeavor. And that artist uh, will cost that company more adapting to that particular style. And chances are it might not happen. So it's a little bit too much of a gamble for a studio. The last reason why you might not get the job, and this is very, very, very rare. This doesn't usually happen, but it can happen. And that's when you actually get the job interview and you screw up the job interview. And here's the thing. There's different pe many different people being from a director's perspective. I was a director at Electronic Arts and I held many, many job interviews. I looked at hundreds of portfolios. By the time that person was called in, that artist was called in for a job interview, they were 85% there. The only reason we'd go for a job interview was to assess that person's personality. See if the person is a nice person to work with, if they've got a friendly, sociable personality, or if they were complete antisocial cold jerks. And that's a very important thing because when you're hiring somebody for a studio, you want to make sure that this person isn't going to be a nightmare to work with, that they're not going to be antisocial, that they're not going to play dirty politics, that they're not going to have egos that interfere with the relationships with other people or create negativity in the studio. In most cases, it's not usually an issue. Most people walk into studios and they go to job interviews and they're very friendly. Now, does that mean you need to be extroverted? Let's put that on the table for a moment. Because remember, a lot of us artists are very introverted people. We're quiet. We're not overt people. And that's not badly judged from other people. Now, I'm sure many introverts will say, well, that's not entirely true. Introverts are very often misinterpreted as being antisocial or cold people. I understand that side of it. But what I'm saying is, even if you aren't an, uh, an outgoing, boisterous, loud person, will not result in an employer thinking that you're difficult to work with. It's when people have are very non-responsive. One of the things that makes working with anybody, be it a student, be it an employee in a studio, be anybody that you have to team up with, when you're dealing with somebody who is emotionally non-responsive, that is incredibly stressful to deal with. Trying to be sociable, trying to be welcoming, trying to uh, you know, inform and help and need that kind of feedback, need that kind of reciprocation for somebody who just gives you a poker face, who, who's non-responsive, who doesn't laugh at jokes or who doesn't acknowledge things you're saying. They just stare at you with a blank face. Try working with somebody like that. It turns hours into days. It turns days into weeks. It's very difficult to work with. So even if you are a little bit more introverted, make a conscious effort to be responsive. Don't just sit there and stare at somebody. It almost feels as if you don't like them or you don't care. And nobody wants to work with somebody like that. Make a point of being friendly. Make a point of being interested. Make a point of listening and responding. Make a point of smiling. Make a point of reacting to what that other person is sharing with you, okay? It doesn't mean you have to be the life of the party. It doesn't mean you have to be Mr. or Mrs. Extrovert. It just means that you need to be somebody who's showing somebody else basic kindness and respect. If your artwork's already good enough, good enough that they called you in for that job interview, and you can provide whoever's, whoever's interviewing you with some kind of warmth and kindness, you're almost guaranteed the job unless the competition is very hefty. But if you're shortlisted for a job and you've been called in guaranteed, you've already been considered for it. But what happens if you don't? How do you handle that? Well, 
There's many things that get in the way between us and getting that information that we need. I was lucky when I when I got a chance to deal with and speak with my friend who was the head of, or working at the HR department at Ubisoft, but not most of us don't. And one of the things that a lot of my students or people who reach out to me ask is, or they state that they've done is, they've reached out to the director for feedback. Now, I'm not sure if in the past I've, I've, uh, I've shared the advice, maybe, maybe not, but I might have shared the advice in the past to try to reach out to people and see if they'll respond. If you're speaking to fellow artists, fellow directors, you can reach out to people and ask, but don't necessarily expect a reply. Now I've reached out to some pretty, I've mentioned in the past, I've reached out to some pretty up there famous artists, like more famous than you might think, <laughs> award-winning big time artists who replied within half an hour with articulate full length replies. But I've also reached out to dozens and dozens of directors and artists and seniors who didn't bother to reply. And one can, can interpret that as them being jerks, being douchebags, being elitists, being too big and important to come down from their mountain to mingle with commoners. Sometimes that's the case, but more often than not, that's not the case. And in my particular case, when I was working as a director, you need to understand that depending on the type of studio you're working for, depending on the volume of emails and work you've got to deal with on a daily basis, you cannot entertain answering everybody's email when it comes to why did you not accept my portfolio? And if you do, for one, you might be setting a precedent that you might not be able to keep up with where every second person reaches out to you out of the hundreds of applicants that you've had to filter through and answer each one of them when you simply don't have the time to do that. You just don't. Even me being a, uh, a one-man show YouTuber, the amount of emails and messages and all those things that I, that, I, that I receive on a daily basis can get overwhelming sometimes. I always make an effort to reply, but I'm noticing as time passes and more and more people reach out to me, it's becoming more and more difficult to answer ones, especially the particularly long ones when people share very heartfelt, very long stories with you. And it can be very difficult to read through all of that kind of stuff when you've got another 15 waiting for you. It's not saying I'm Mr. Famous. It's not saying I'm Mr. Popularity. It's, it's because that's the community we're a part of, that we reach out to each other. And this is a very helpful community, but it's a big job especially when I have videos and family affairs and all kinds of things I have to take care of as well and teaching, right? So understand that when you're speaking to a professional, if they don't reply, it's not because they're jerks. It might be because they just simply can't. And by telling you they can't might not worsen the blow of not receiving a reply. Sometimes just not answering is a little bit less personal, a little bit, a little bit less misinterpreted person was just busy, they didn't have time to reply. So understand that that's the case. So therein lies the big conundrum that us artists have to deal with. And that is, how the hell do we find out whether we're good enough or not? Right? That's the tricky part. How do I know whether or not I'm good enough? Well, you'd think that as artists, we should be able to observe our own work, compare it to others, and see whether or not our artwork is up to par. But Ironically, it's not that simple, is it? In fact, I'd, I would argue that whether it be myself or with the artists that I teach or people that I speak to, a skill that many of us artists have to spend many, many years developing is our ability to analyze, judge, and fix and improve our art objectively. To be able to take an objective view of our own work with a trained eye and be able to say, these are my weaknesses. But here's the thing. When you know better, they're no longer a weakness. You usually know what to do in the event that you've done something that doesn't work. If you've overcome an obstacle, it's no longer an obstacle for you. So we usually have a very difficult time seeing what's wrong with our work. And there's the double-edged sword, isn't it? 
We know that it's not good enough, but we don't have the knowledge to fix it. We reach out to people to, for assistance, for help, for feedback, and either A, nobody replies, or B, too many people reply, and we completely lose grounding. We end up getting 16 pieces of advice that are all different. So who do you reach out to? Well, I've mentioned community. Finding a community of people that can help you out, that share a style, share that passion, understand your goals, and can help you. That is a number one priority for artists. And I've talked all about it last week in my, in my last art talk, so you can go check it out. But it's also incredibly helpful to speak to a professional. But speak to a professional that has created, that, has, that is part of a platform that allows you to be able to reach out to them personally. One of the reasons why I started my private mentorship in the first place was because I didn't have the distraction and the overburdening responsibility of responding to too many people at the same time. It was just, I just couldn't respond to everybody's personal needs as artists in a classroom with 30, 40 people in it. It's just impossible. With a three to four hour time frame, it's not going to happen. So I started a private mentorship. And as such, I can sit down with one student at a time and we can invest all of our time and energy into them, what they do, what they need to improve. And furthermore, for me to be able to look at their work objectively and say, here, this is your strengths. I want you to really focus on those strengths, exploit them, take advantage of them. This is your bread and butter right here. But this is holding you back and this is holding you back. So you might want to spend more time working on this and have that catch up with everything else to help artists become more balanced, more well-rounded so that they don't have to deal with these obstacles and to get an objective perspective of their artwork and say, this is probably why you didn't get that job is because of this, this, and that. So you want to do that, fix this, give yourself about a month or two, you should be good to go as long as you focus on that. Or maybe you need several months, or maybe you might even need years because you're very new and you're going to require a lot more practice to get your artwork up to a professional standard. But there's nothing more stressful and discouraging than not knowing. I'd much prefer somebody to look at my work and say, Adam, it's going to take you another five years to get to where you want to get if you work your ass off. Versus somebody who says, oh, practice, practice, you'll make it eventually. I hate, I hate open-ended timelines. I can't stand that. Practice, practice for what? For how long? I don't know. That's a very stressful thought and it's very discouraging because does it mean I'm going to be spending two weeks or does it mean that I'm going to be spending 10 years? I need somebody to be honest with me, right? but honest in a professional way, not bashing, not insulting, not belittling, not rejecting, but just saying, no, it's going to take about that much time if you really put some effort into it, but you have to apply yourself. If you don't apply yourself, expect it to take a couple of years longer. I can live with that. Now I can plan for something. I can get a side job because I know I'm not going to be getting a job next week. But when you don't know, when you simply don't know, you're sitting there waiting for that phone call from the studio that never comes. And that's a very discouraging thought. So it's definitely not helpful whatsoever. Look at the expanding list of schools online. Schoolism, which consists of multiple high tier artists, Anthony Jones, Tyler Edlin, Darkin, the, uh, Noah Bradley's art camp, Mark Brunet, who just started his new mentorship, Cynics, Clint Kearley, Borodante, all of these artists, Marco Bucci, all of these artists have very personalized, unique skills and all offer in one way or another feedback, YouTube videos, private mentorships, professional feedback, art critiques. They all offer something and they all have their own unique style, their own unique angle into the industry. There's so much to benefit from these artists and they are accessible. These are people that either have schools, Patreons, online learning resources. Another amazing one is my, one of my personal favorite is Charles Bernard from Online Art Academy. I cannot recommend that guy enough. He's an absolute gem of the industry. These are some of the most fantastic resources online for learning, for getting professional personalized feedback, you name it, take advantage of them. But most importantly, here's the thing. And this is actually a quote from Anthony Jones directly. Somebody had asked him the question, it must have been one of his private 
streams, I think it must have been. Somebody had asked him the question, what is one of the common qualities of some of your most successful art students with his robot pencil mentorship? And his answer was very funny, but very true. He said, the, the most successful artists in my mentorships are the ones that actually listen. <laughs> they actually listen. And that's a very important fact to bring. That's a very important point to bring up today because it's one thing to reach out to a professional, but it's another thing to let go of your ego and actually listen to this advice confided. The person who you're speaking to is not being belittling or insulting or even flat out abusive. If you're dealing with somebody who's compassionate, considerate, professional and objective with their feedback, an obstacle might not be the fact that you're not getting the feedback. It might be that you're resisting that feedback. There are a lot of artists out there that resist change, that resist growth and will come up with any excuse to avoid improving. And it's sometimes very, very seldom, but it's sometimes when I'm dealing with a student like that, that they might come back and say, yeah, yeah, I know, I know. And they say that to pretty much every piece of advice I give them. Yeah, yeah, I know. And my reply to them is, okay, good, you know, then how come I don't see that in your artwork? Usually they don't have a fancy comeback to that one. That usually makes them stop and go, well, good point. That's exactly. So if you know, you know, you know, then I should see, should see, should see, but I don't. I see you doing the same mistakes over and over again. So instead of I know, I know, I knowing it, why don't you practice, practice, practice that specifically to improve your work? So understand that one of the important artistic skills you're going to need to develop moving forward is your ability to be objective towards yourself and not to take these things personally. To be able to look and listen to the advice of other people and use that as a means to grow instead of reaching out to other people for help. And then when they offer their help, you tell them they're wrong. Because if you're reaching out to them in the first place, chances are they know something you don't. So take advantage of that rare moment. So with that said, I love you with all my heart, of course, and happy painting. Take care. <music>